Hello and welcome to this I can design tutorial on functional safety. So today we're going to talk about uh, the concepts of redundancy and diagnostics. And uh, we're going to look at uh, two analog signals uh, like uh, 0.5 to 4.5 volt signals and how to combine this in a good way using uh, redundancy. Uh, we have the min of abs method as a way to achieve that and how to achieve good diagnostics using the I can assign compare channels. We're gonna look at simulation control when we have dual signals that normally uh, should be following each other and we're gonna look at startup and restart conditions. So the function is a familiar one, a uh, lift truck with uh, a proportional lift and uh, lowering. The functional safety aspect of this is that we see this as a hold to run function. When the operator lets go of the lever, uh, the movement needs to stop and it's not supposed to be starting at, under any other conditions that the, than that the operator is actually actively uh, lifting or lowering. Uh, we're also going to look at how to combine this with a separate function like uh, some other enable function. And we're going to look at how to achieve startup conditions for this and also restart conditions in case of a fault, like requiring a neutral position or blocking it altogether in case there is a fault. So the signal flow is we have one ICANN LST lever. It's wired to an MC43 functional safety. And we have a Parker L90 LS valve. Looking at this in ICANN Design, we have a small multi-master system, an MD47 and an MC43FS. And on the application here, we have one function group. If I click on this, I see uh, these three channels, starting with a voltage input, uh, and it's scaled 0.5 to 4.5 uh, volts to give a minus 100 to plus 100 uh, deflection of, of the lever. And the error value here is set to zero. So zero is a safe error value in this application uh, corresponding to the same position as we have when the operator lets go of the lever. So uh, that's from the uh, dead band here, minus 10 uh, to plus 10 it gives the function uh, the value zero. And the value zero when that's fed into the current output uh, deactivates the output. Uh, if we look at this current output here with the component navigator, we see it's located on our MC43 FS module with safe outputs. And looking at this one here, let me just show you something from the instruction book here. Just before we continue, let's just pause for a moment and sort of point out the obvious that this is product and system options that uh, should help you as machine designers to improve upon your design. Uh, but uh, obviously you need to spend more time investigating how to make your machine safe enough. So uh, what I wanted to show in this uh, safety manual is a little bit about the architecture for a safety function and, and looking specifically on the input subsystem here. So that could be our ICANN LST lever where we have the two signals the uh, primary and secondary uh, crossed signals. And there's really two ways to use this. And I, I see a lot of people who uh, use it as a single structure channel with just diagnostics, just using the second signal as uh, for comparison. But what, I, what I'd like to show here is uh, how to combine the signals in a better way using both of the signals uh, as a more redundant or a, as a fully redundant structure where we actually uh, it doesn't matter if the diagnostics uh, detects it uh, we're still gonna get to the safe state and we're adding diagnostics to that so let's see how that looks in I can design so to add a voltage input for the secondary signal we just uh, double click here we select the voltage input uh, and we give it the name joystick lift secondary and this is going to be scaled so that the min value is plus 100 and the scaled max is minus 100 and we, if we just compare this to 
what we have before, we see that they are now uh, opposite in, in how they're scaled. And we put it on the MC43. Uh, we could then go to our lift function here, and we had this dead band so, since before, so we just copy paste this. We set the input to be the joystick lift secondary. And now for a trick here, the method here was default set to max of absolute. We want to take the smallest of the two, so we change this to become min of absolute. So that means that this one will take the smallest uh, of the two. We can also just set our calculation order here so that we sample them uh, or look at values from the same cycle here in the comparison. And uh, we can try and simulate this with the simulate button. So in the simulator, we see the low error here on our uh, signals. We can go in and look at this in the application view where we can, we can control it from here, uh, but it's nicer to put them in a simulation group. And uh, here we switch between the raw value and the scaled value. And just make this a little bit smaller so we can see in I can assign what's going on here. Um, and as we see, this value is activating, but the other one is at zero, and the resulting function is at zero, thanks to the min of abs method. If we take the other one and uh, give it a larger value, then it's still that smaller of uh, the smaller of the two values that's that gives us the output. So that's the min of abs method, the smallest absolute value. So the next step will be to add uh, a comparison channel to uh, detect in-range failure. So we can double click here to add a channel. We type compare and we find the analog analog comparison because we have two analog values that we're looking at. And uh, let's add the joystick lift and compare this to the joystick lift secondary. And we put a diff uh, check limit in the same unit as, as these two. And let's name this JS lift check. Uh, this channel will be true when the check is OK. Uh, and the classic method for uh, just enabling and disable something in an analog channel is to just bring in a dual object in both directions here. So we have uh, limiting plus and minus and sort out the calculation order here also. So let's simulate this one. So with uh, simulator running here we see that we have a pop-up message saying JS lift diff check error and that's the name and status of this comparison uh, channel. Uh, so if we uh, just take and uh, uh, change these values so they're uh, closer to each other again, we see that it goes into OK. So it's within that uh, diff check limit of uh, plus minus 25. But it recovered automatically here and, and the lift function started activating and this may not be what uh, the safest way to do things. So let's look at some uh, startup and restart conditions next. To have a restart condition, we have uh, something called the OK to start uh, property here. And this works both for startup and after faults. So the functionality we want here is to just check that the joystick is within neutral. Uh, so that's within the plus minus 10 dead band. So let's add an internal digital channel. Name it uh, JS in uh, neutral. It's, we want this to be on both conditions. We take an inside operator here. Joystick lift being within the minus 10 and plus 10 dead band. 
we duplicate this for the other signal and we see that uh, the condition here is or the method is uh, and comparison uh, take the secondary and uh, connect this to our okay to start here as joystick in neutral or we could be more specific and name this joystick lift in neutral and just fix the calculation order and we can simulate so in our simulator here we can see the joystick lift check is in start block uh, so uh, we get no output here uh, because because of this and uh, if we just look at the values here we see so it's 45 and 43 so joystick lift in neutral is false uh, if we try to bring this a little bit uh, uh, closer to the to the center position here uh, uh, still without outside of the dead band so now we see both of them are within neutral and uh, joystick lift neutral so okay start block is okay so we can start to activate here and give some value And we get activation on the output now it's gonna be a little bit difficult for me to work like this because as soon as i uh, try to drag on one of the sliders it's gonna throw a diff check error so what i can do to uh, make this work in a better way is to have a look at the simulation control here and we can use the primary signal as our input to the secondary for simulation purposes so this is in simulate and we set this to control the scaled value now and then I can move the slider and have both values controlled at the same time during simulation so we want to combine this uh, lift function now with some other enabling functions so uh, to do that uh, let's just add one uh, digital input that will just use as a test input like uh, test and enable so this will come from some other safety function and we uh, yeah uh, put that on the uh, mc43 uh, it should come from somewhere else so let's turn this into a, or insert in between a function group input uh, using that move up function that i just showed and uh, call this enable uh, yeah, FGI uh, we have the joystick lift now uh, or the lift check connected to the lift function now and I'd want to insert this enable condition in here so let's use one uh, internal digital in between so adding an internal digital call it enable lift output and here we can use a trick called replace channel so replacing this with enable lift output replaces those references over here and now we could just go back to our enable lift output we uh, take this joystick lift check and we have inserted this internal digital in between here uh, we of course want to combine this with an and combination for the enable uh, so bringing in that function group input enable here and now we have an and combination of these two um, and calculation order so this isn't all that good because and we will see that when we simulate uh, so we start the simulation so i just put this uh, digital input in a simulation group here and we can see what's going on so we switched on the enabling uh, use the joystick to activate the output and uh, we have this enable function and we switch it off and that uh, brings the output to zero and we can trace this here uh, back and we will see it's come is from the enable but the uh, uh, joystick check is uh, still uh, true uh, what will then happen if we enable again this isn't good because now we're activating immediately so we need to stop that 
Back in edit mode in Icon Design, we have this property called uh, enabled on the compare channel. And uh, we click here, we can connect our enable condition from the FGI. And uh, with this, we can now uh, simulate and we see uh, the difference. And uh, immediately we see that we're starting out now with the start block because we were not in, in the neutral position. So let's first bring it into the neutral position and then we can activate. If we disable and enable again, we're back in this uh, start block. Uh, so that way we can combine the compare channel with another safety function uh, using this enable uh, property. So for some uh, final comment on this application, uh, you may have noticed that the joystick lift check becomes false when the enable is false. So this isn't entirely necessary. I prefer to have it uh, like this uh, to see one place where the enable uh, all the conditions uh, are combined, but we don't actually need it. We could replace this with the uh, joystick lift check and uh, the enabling uh, here uh, puts joystick lift check to false and that will bring this to false. Uh, so that saves one channel, but at the expense of uh, having less obvious uh, logic. Uh, so it's a little bit a matter of uh, choice for the designer here. So for the next uh, video tutorial, uh, we're going to look at uh, how to mark things as safety uh, related. So uh, we'll see what that is in the next tutorial. Thank you.